The lovely Jill Payne is here, and she's our in-house psychotherapist. She joins us via Skype. Hi, Jill. Good morning, Sam. Nice to see you again. <laughs> It's always good seeing you. Yes, I, we missed each other with vacations and stuff and move and, and stuff. Right. Um, there's a lot to talk about, and we'll go into the next right. segment because I, I had to respond to that MSNBC dimwit. Um, the, we got two big stories, which are, are amazing. We've got the NFL caving to real Americans who said, right. to, like real Americans from Texas to Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio who are like, we don't want you to disrespect the flag. We don't want players to disrespect first responders. You don't right. really understand what you're doing. You don't do anything the rest of the week, drive around your Bentleys, go to strip clubs, and wear you know, Mercedes-Benz logos made of diamonds around your neck. You, you're never in Chicago. You're not doing you know whatever. And it's just a handful. It's not all the players. There's some, we have some friends. They're good players. But anyway, good guys. Right. Give me the psychology. You're a psychotherapist. Uh, you're on the, uh, a part of the American Psych Psychotherapy Association. She's an author, friend of our show. Take it away. So we, we want to talk about the football. And then we'll, right? get, to the, we'll get to Harvey Weinstein. Okay, after, after and, and I was on national news about a week ago saying that this was going to happen, is that um, it was the straw that broke the camel's back uh, because all this hate, hatred and anger towards Trump was – eventually going to just sort of fall. And so what happened is the NFL, when when the young man that first started it, he knew what he was doing, even though that still may not have been right for what was happening. And then it sort of got lost in transition and went against Trump. So really even lost what it was for. And I wanted to explain to uh, Two things that the reason that people are now going to be standing and people were standing in the in the uh, stands is because there's race and nationality are two different things. So we have race, which is your bloodline. You know, if you're black, white, Asian, so forth. That that is a race. If if you have nationality. I am in Germany, my nationality, and we've gone through this before, is German. If I go to Iran, it's Iranian, okay? So when you are here in America, your nationality is what, Sam? God, I hate these tough questions. If I take America for 200, Alex, do I win the inflatable swimming pool? I'm going to clap because the one thing that makes us so great is that the people that have come here, the immigrants, have assimilated into our society and become a great nation because we are working together. And then when you go home, you practice your different ethnic cultures. But when you are in America, we have uh, our borders, our culture, our, our tradition, our language, and what is our main language in America? Well, the official language in many states, and actually in the language of currency, the language of the Constitution, the official language right. of law is English. There you go. So that is what they're standing for. So they're standing for nationality. And so the flag is – race may be a part of the flag. The flag is really representing our nation. So – that's the reason there's a big misunderstanding with what's going on. And a lot of the things that those uh, uh, people that do not want to stand for the flag, they could spend their millions on helping people in poverty right. and modeling. Well, I'm just saying in psychology, uh, kneeling is not modeling appropriate behavior in America. So for them to maybe go, they don't even need to spend their money, but model and go to uh, areas where these children need good models of how to cope and and be independent in America. Amen, so, sister. Amen, sister. I'm calling you a sister. That. <laughs> well, it's true. Jill Payne, our in-house psychotherapist, and you had people not the brightest bulbs once again, and they're like, "I'm right. gonna take a knee," and they they they're so they live in such a bubble. They live in a world where when they drop a towel, and I've been at the clubhouse and locker rooms. Somebody picks it up. If they're like, I'm hungry, oh, I'll get you something. What do you need? Like the, their meals are all prepared for them. Their clothes are washed for them. They don't carry anything. They don't do anything. I and mean, they play a sport, which is great. But the rest of the time, they don't do anything. And they, they seriously, 
You want something to eat? I'll get it for you. Some of them do go out there and help the needy. Yeah, there are. There's Aaron Rodgers. There's the Drew Bledsoe's. Right. They, they know, do. There are, and there are good guys. The Peyton Mannings. There are a lot of good guys out there who give right. back, give back, give back. Yeah, it's it's an absolute mess. Let me take a break. Um, okay. But I, but I, 